how's it going everybody? Burr Brian here. Welcome back to another Tall Can Tuesday. In this video series, I like to give you updates on my life and the future of the channel, talk about random topics and answer questions submitted by you, the fine viewers of this channel, and of course, drink some good beer. So, tonight I definitely have a pretty awesome beer. I'm going to talk about this one a little bit more later on in the video as well, uh, with some ideas I'm working on with the channel. But uh, this is from my favorite local brewery here in town. I'm talking about Swamp Head Brewery. And man, they really do make some incredible beers, and their IPAs are absolutely outstanding. Well, this is their 10-10-10. It's an Imperial India Pale Ale, and this one's at 10% per volume. Perfect beer for a tall can Tuesday. Going to get a good buzz on this. On the side here it says, Fertilizer for the hop lover's soul. Our Imperial IPA is all about excess. We use massive quantities of the finest European barley malts and American hops to produce a wonderfully malty beer with outrageous hop expressions. From the initial aroma through the balanced finish and the lingering hop flavors that coat your palate. Tin 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 is truly a fertilizer for the hop lover's soul. Very, very cool. And again, I just I love their beers. I'm glad that they've been starting to put out some of these uh, bigger limited edition release ones. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the normal and pop the top. Ooh, nice carbonation on that one. And take a look at the pour. Man, that is just a beautiful looking beer. Awesome IPA. It's got a slight haziness to it, not too much, um, but uh, obviously a nice big thick head on there. Oh yeah, and you definitely smell in these sweet hop aromas. That's one thing I love about a lot of their IPAs. They tend to have more of a sweeter kind of citrusy, nice note. But again, this one's a, uh, a pretty powerful beer. I've actually had this one several times at the brewery, and I've never had it out of a bottle like this, but at the brewery, you only get the snifter, so you pay five or six bucks or whatever and get a nice snifter glass and uh, enjoy it that way. But uh, anyway, this one looks really good. Let's give it a taste. Yeah. Really good beer, and for being the Imperial IPA, being 10% like it is, it's a very smooth beer. It's juicy, meaning it's kind of like refreshing. It's got a little bite to it, a little body. There is good bitterness to it. You feel it kind of drying up a little bit in the aftertaste. Man, it's really excellent out of this beer. So I guess we'll jump right into that before I get into the questions and some other topics that I'm, I've got going on. Let me give you little updates about the channel. Um, obviously, right now I'm rocking the uh, Reckless Eating shirt, showing some support to one of the best YouTube channels out there. Those guys are pretty awesome. They have a whole lot of fun doing their videos. And uh, everything from crazy challenges to pretty cool food reviews and stuff. But uh, anyway, there'll be a link down below where you can check out their channel. Um, but what we're going to be trying to do here with this channel is, um, you know, I want to do a couple contests. And that's what I was talking about with this beer in particular. I'm going to try to pick up another one of these bottles soon. And so for all of my viewers that are 21 and older um, who would be interested, who like these craft beer videos and watch, I'm going to try to do a contest for you guys. And so that, you know, you get a chance to kind of win this. It'll probably be something basic where you have to like the video, comment, share, things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just something that I was kind of coming up with. I want to do a series for, I have a lot of people that watch different videos of mine. I've got people that like the food reviews and people that like hot sauce and those that like beer. So I'm going to try to do one for everybody. I'm going to spread it out over a couple months, like maybe over a six month period or something. I'll do uh, one where it's for the beer, um, for some, for one of these. So you can check out my local brewery and try one of their most awesome limited beers. And then also I'll do, I've got a limited edition hot sauce that I, I want to give away to somebody. I thought that would be cool for someone in the hot sauce community to get their hands on this one. It's one of my favorite bottles that I've got. Um, and also I'm going to probably just pick up like a $20, $25 gift card or something to one of the local food places and give that away to everyone, you know, somebody who really likes the food videos. Again, all the, it'll be a real simple contest just involving sharing, subscribing, all that stuff. Um, but that's, that's just one thing I want to do to kind of give back to everybody who's been watching and stuff and give everybody an opportunity to win something they might really enjoy. And, um, you know, hopefully that's a, a cool idea. Let me know down below what you think about that. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump into a couple questions. I've got my trusty pad here where I write everything down on. And I've got, uh, first question comes from Seth King. And he says, what is your worst injury? Well, 
Let me go ahead and take a swig before I jump into that one. Really good beer. All right. Um, my worst injury, honestly, is probably not anything too bad compared to a lot of people out there. I've never broken a bone, thankfully. Knock on wood. Um, but uh, I guess the, the worst thing I ever had was when I was a kid, me and some buddies, it was right around Christmas time. We were all hanging out, and uh, we were riding our bikes, you know, bicycles around. And I was riding my buddies, and I guess the water bottle holder was broken, and so... You know, one of the screws was kind of like sticking out sideways. And there's this really crazy hill we all tried to go riding down. It's this really steep dirt hill. We're all on mountain bikes and stuff. But, you know, we went down it and it was kind of rainy that day. So when I started going down, everybody was bumping. People were falling, you know, my two buddies were falling off their bikes and stuff. And me, you know, the bike slid sideways and my foot slipped off the pedal. And when it did, my shin jabbed into this, you know, thick water bottle screw and it just ripped upward. So, you know, it was probably about that big. I don't know. Maybe I can show a picture of my scar or something up here so you can see it. Still to this day, it won't ever go away. But, um, you know, I remember it was, it was crazy. Like, my buddies freaked out. They were like, all right, we're going to go get our mom. And I didn't know what was going on. I was starting to get, like, dizzy. I looked down. There's blood just pouring out of my leg. I was freaking out. Started walking around through this neighborhood. And I went up to just, you know, some house. I was like, I, I got to knock on somebody's door. And this really old lady answers the door, and she looks down and sees my leg, and she freaks out a little bit. She's like, oh, my God. And so she runs and gets, like, a, a wet cloth and um, a dry one and wipes everything up and tries to bandage up my leg, you know, just to kind of keep the bleeding down or whatever. And, uh, you know, my friend's mom came and picked me up. And it's crazy because my dad, uh, he's always big into photography, and that's kind of why I got it. He did a lot of uh, videos and stuff. He used to shoot weddings professionally and things like that and so you know here I am with my leg split open and you know he's got my leg propped up before we could go to the hospital to the ER he's got his camera out and he's taking all these pictures of my wound and stuff I still haven't seen those in a long time and I'm hoping he still has them somewhere I'll have to see if I can get them from him um, maybe he'll send it to me I've got a hard drive coming with a whole bunch of old family stuff on it and I'm going to share some of that with you guys <laughs> but um yeah, so I mean, then I went to the hospital. It was only like seven or eight stitches or something like that. They're really big stitches. And, um, you know, it was kind of cool. I got treated, you know, like a, you know, a king for a little while. I, I got to sleep downstairs on the fold-out couch bed in front of the big TV. And during that time, my dad had, this was like back before people had projectors and stuff, but my dad worked at uh, Bell South and managed to bring home a projector for us. And we had a big screen, uh, just a sheet hanging from the roof. I remember watching Doogie Howser, MD. And I used to play like Mike Tyson's Punch Out and all that stuff on a giant uh, projector screen. It was pretty awesome way back in the day. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that was probably my, my worst injury. So thanks a lot for the question, buddy. Cheers. All right, so next question we've got is from Flintquitch. He says, if you could live in any other time period, when would it be? And that's kind of an interesting question because last night I watched one of my favorite old movies that my dad got me to watch called uh, Westworld. And if you haven't seen it, check it out. HBO is actually going, uh, working on uh, doing some kind of really cool uh, remake of it, some kind of show. It's going to actually be a series. I'm really looking forward to it, and I have high hopes for it. Um, but if you haven't seen this, this movie, it's absolutely amazing. Ewell Brenner is still one of my favorite actors of all time. He's just a, uh, an incredible actor from that, The Magnificent Seven, uh, The King and I, lots of great movies. Um, but, uh, anyway, you know, I've often thought that my favorite time period would be the Wild West, like in that movie where you could go back, times were simple, you know, the freedom to roam the land and all that, um... And I, I don't know, I'm always torn between that and, and medieval times. Like, I would almost, I like the idea of the kingdoms, but at the same time, I think it was just too much structure, too much murder, too, just too much mayhem. You could die from so much more back then. So, yeah, I think if I had to choose any period, it would be during the, the Wild West uh, era, uh, you know, in the, in the 1800s, or, you know, mid-late 1800s. Uh, it, it's just... 
I don't know. It's, it's just so nice to, to think that, you know, away from all of this technology, none of this, everything is seen, everybody's tracked, everybody, you know everything that's going on all times. It's, uh, <clears throat> it would just be so neat to, to just ride your horse out into the middle of nowhere and sit back and drink a beer, or look out into the sunset, or, you know, have a little campfire. And I don't know. I mean, you can still do those things, obviously, but... Uh, I guess that would be my favorite time period anyway. I've also thought about the rise of the Roman Empire and uh, during feudal Japan and stuff like that, but <clears throat> I don't know. Some of those seemed like too too barbaric in a sense. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for the question, buddy. Cheers. All right, so some topics I want to talk about. Um challenges or something that I definitely want to do some more videos and some of you out there have expressed a want to see some challenges so I'm putting this out there to you guys if you have something you'd like to see if uh, I'm kind of looking for challenges let me know down below what would be some fun things to do and I'm not really looking for like extreme eating stuff like you know lots of food lots of amounts of stuff I'm gonna maybe eventually do that but right now I'm really trying to lose weight trying to get healthy I'm you know, riding you know a bike 50 60 miles a week um, and, uh, sometimes more than that, but, uh, you know, so I, I'm looking for like fun ideas, gross foods are fine and all that. Um, but you know, just some entertaining, fun ideas, maybe healthy, even healthy challenges, whatever, something like that. Let me know what you think. If you have any ideas, cause I really don't know. I watch a lot of YouTube channels and I get ideas from them, uh, but, um, I don't know. Anyway, that's just kind of one thing I've been thinking about lately. Another thing uh, I picked up a couple old school cameras not too long back. They're they're not like super old, but they're um, I think one's a, a high eight um, or I don't know eight millimeter. I don't know. Anyway, I have two different cameras. Um, I'm working on getting another power supply, and I need to get a capture card for my computer and some of the wires to transfer the stuff over. But I want to do some fun videos with some old school cameras. Uh, they've got the night vision stuff, so maybe do some of that like Blair Witch Project style stuff. And uh, just kind of have a little fun with those, <clears throat> some adventure in Florida things, like maybe go for a bike ride at night with the camera running. Um, but uh, anyway, I just thought that'd be kind of a interesting thing to do, fun. You don't really see too too much footage these days of a lot of the old school cameras, and I don't know, it'd be just kind of fun to play around with them. And, and uh, if you guys have any ideas of things I could do with them, let me know down below as well. This beer is really, really strong, and uh, I mean, it's got a, the more I'm drinking it, as it warms up, that bitterness gets stronger, and it does have a really nice sweetness to it, but it is definitely a, um, a really intense beer to be trying to chug in these videos. I always seem to pick these. I, you know, I'm going to, I really need to get back because the whole idea of doing these was I was going to alternate between like big mass produced beers and malt liquors and things and uh, the craft beers because I know I have people that like malt liquor and I have people that like craft that watch my videos and I don't have hate towards either community and I try to stay away from all that drama and shit. Um, <clears throat> so I do need to get back and maybe next, next week's video I'll pick up something that's either more on the mainstream or more um, just more easy drink and easy to chug because I've been having a lot of these harsh ones or <laughs> pretty high alcohol beers. Anyway, one more swig for the next uh, topic. All right, so what else was I looking for? Um, oh, cooking videos. I am uh, definitely planning on doing some cooking videos. A lot of you guys have been asking for them. And, you know, I've been looking at my analytics and seeing the, you know, views and stuff I get on videos and whatnot. And the number one video on this channel was the... Uh, lemon ginger uh, uh, green drink that I made and you know it's just a healthy drink recipe everybody seemed to love it I do still have my juicer I really need to start using it more and um, you know part of that's gonna happen once I get my car back if you guys don't know I've been without my car for a month or two now and uh, it's, it just needs a new starter and I don't know hopefully that's it I may just need to change a filter and uh, put oil in but I had a bad oil leak so hopefully it's nothing too bad. It'd be easy fix. Um, but um, so, you know, it's just been hard to really carry a lot of stuff in a backpack home, you know, on a seven mile bike ride after a 10 hour shift, you know, 
and I really don't have, you know, my roommate doesn't really, I don't know him too well enough to ask to get stuff from the store, so I don't know. It's, uh, it's been difficult to kind of eat healthy. I've been ordering a lot of Domino's on the weekend, but dur you know, during work I do have a place next door that I've, I've been ordering. They've got really uh, cost-effective meals, and um, you know, so I've been trying to do all that stuff. And, uh, and, and anyway, I've got a lot of cool ideas coming up. Like one thing I, I mentioned before, I want to show you guys some sauce recipes, like making your own homemade tomato sauce. Uh, for uh, spaghetti or for more specifically like pizza topping it's kind of a versatile sauce but with the uh, also making homemade pizzas doing different kinds of doughs and uh, I've been looking at that one picture that's been floating around I don't know if you guys have seen it where it's a pizza burger basically and both buns are small pizzas like pepperoni pizzas and then you've got this meat inside and I'm going to try to do a stuffed burger for that one and then have the pizza you know, a homemade, home-baked pizza as the bun. So that should be a pretty awesome video. Uh, all other ideas, maybe some more juicing videos, kind of get some healthy stuff out there. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, like some barbecue videos and stuff I'll try to share with you guys as well, some smoking, uh, slow-smoking foods and things. Uh, and I, you know, I miss cooking. I need to get back into it for healthy reasons to stop eating shitty food. Occasionally, you know, I'm going to be doing once a week, you know the the fast food reviews so i'll do those on sundays um, but that's just once a week and and you know hopefully i'll try to find some good healthier fast food and I'll, of course some more sweet melts coming here soon god i've got a good buzz sorry if you guys notice i'm kind of like i feel like i'm running on i'm getting getting uh pretty pretty drunk here I actually had two imperial pale ales before this from new belgium brewing company they're rampant and this is definitely kicking it up a notch All right, so I've run out of topics, um, so I'm going to get to this story that I wanted to share with you guys. This one is probably one of my favorite stories to tell uh, because, I, I don't know, at the time it wasn't cool and it wasn't funny at all, but now looking back it is, and I hope my parents don't ever watch this because they really, uh, they wouldn't find any humor, I don't think, in this at all. Uh, <clears throat> but at one time... I became somewhat of a legend for a very short period of time in my uh, high school days, and uh, it was it was from like a really crazy thing. So back in the day, this was kind of before AOL uh, was out, where you could do like all the, the chat boards and message rooms and stuff. There, uh, there was something here locally in, in our area because we live near Alachua County. So when I was living in Melrose and Keystone Heights and stuff, the uh, you know, Alachua County wasn't too far away. Anyway, they had what they called the Alachua Freenet, and I think it still exists to this day, I'm not sure, but it was a place where people could go and you could, you know, talk to local people in your community, and uh, this was like during the beginning days, and I had a laptop, and I was able to just sit up in my room and, and chat with people from all over. This was one of like the first laptops that were out, and I think it was a laptop. Yeah, it had to have been, because I know I didn't have the computer the desktop upstairs but uh anyway <clears throat> um i remember i met some really cool people through that that chat site and obviously it led me to this really crazy story where um all right let me take a swig before i get into this all right so basically I met this girl from Gainesville, and uh, we had started talking on the free net, and um, somehow, anyway, one thing led to another, and I, I invited this girl to come stay with me while I was living at my parents' house. We kind of had this big privacy thing. My parents really didn't go in my room much. They were always kind of secretive. Their door was always shut at night because they were probably, you know, smoking and drinking and playing video pinball games. They had like a whole arcade in their room. It was... They took over our living room and made that their bedroom, and then they turned their old bedroom into an arcade with pinball machines and shuffle alley and all that and beer signs, and then they turned our old dining room into like a pool room because we put a pool table in there and had a couple pinball machines in there. It was crazy, and um, but they would shut themselves off and have a good time at night, and you know, I had my television in my room, I had everything I wanted, the, the internet and all that. And so I just told this girl, yeah, you could come stay with me. I guess she was dealing with some stuff with her parents. She had, she had lived a kind of a rough life. 
And uh, so I remember, I didn't think she was really going to come, but apparently she stole her mother's credit card and got a taxi and rode all the way out to where I lived. I told her where to go. Uh, to this, you know, one road, told her how, exactly, I told her to, you know, take the cab out to the end of the road, and then she could walk to the house, so that, you know, the, nobody could really track her exactly to my address, and, um, anyway, I remember looking down my old familiar dirt road, and I didn't know what to expect, and I see this girl walking down in all black, like, black everything, black skirt, black fingernail polish, black lipstick, black eyeliner, black hair, black shoes, black socks, black everything, and she was like the ultimate, you know, the early 80s, I mean, uh, sorry, the, the 90s goth kind of, um, I don't know, goth emo kind of thing, and, uh, but it was definitely one of the, the coolest experiences in my life, obviously, I, I almost thought about running for a second, and then, obviously, I, I changed my mind, I, I let her come in, say she brought a whole bunch of CDs, so she really turned me on to a lot of different music. Like, I had obviously already knew about, um, uh, uh, you know, groups like Nine Inch Nails and, uh, you know, but she showed me things like Skinny Puppy and, and some just crazy bands that I would never heard of before. And uh, anyway, I see my battery's about to die, so before I finish this story, let me go ahead and swap out the battery. This beer will still be right here at the same level, so I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So, uh, anyway, it was crazy. I, I still remember every detail. That first night, she had stayed with me, and I, I was trying to be the gentleman, and I said, all right, well, you can sleep on the bed. I'll sleep on the floor. And uh, she's like, no, no, you can sleep on the bed with me. And, you know, we started fooling around a little bit, and uh, one thing led to another, and next thing you know, I was, I was losing my virginity to this you know, stranger that's living here in my house. And this went on for about two weeks, 14 days. Uh, you know, I my parents didn't know. I, I just, I was up all night that night. We did it a couple times. And I remember getting on the bus the next morning. And I was so exhausted. I was dead tired. I'm just sitting there with a big shitty grin on my face. And somebody was like, what the hell are you smiling about? I was like, I was up all night having sex. And people were freaking out. Like, no, uh -uh, no, you didn't. And, uh, obviously, I guess somehow rumor had spread through because, uh, you know, I hung out, my brother was six years older than me, so when I went into seventh grade, he was a senior at college, I mean, senior at college, he was a senior at the high school, and he kind of, uh, guided me, and, and I joined the, the weightlifting team, and I met a lot of those guys, so I hung out with the, tw the seniors and the juniors through all my early years, and, uh, you know, just through that crowd, I guess some people heard some stuff, and I, I remember walking around school, people come up to me, hey, hey, you that dude that has that girl living in your house? I was like, yep. And they're like, all right. I became notorious for, for a short while. Uh, and I say short while because it all came crashing down pretty hard at, at uh, one point. I remember, uh, you know, my friend's mom used to work the graveyard shift, so her house was always open at night. Nobody was ever there. She, you know, again, it's just a single mother, and, uh, you know, it was a great opportunity for me and her. I could sneak my friend out of the house. She could bring her clothes over there and wash them all in the house. She could take a shower. And me and Brian would sit there and drink her mom's, his mom's uh, liquor and uh, just relax and have a good night. And that's, that's pretty much how it went for two weeks until that one dreaded day. Let me take another swig before I get into that. Alright, so, one day, we're coming home from school, and uh, as we pull in at the bus stop, I see my dad's truck sitting outside waiting at the bus stop, and now this is the middle of the day, my dad's supposed to be at work. All my friends, before I could say anything, they were already on it. They see my dad's truck, they're like, ooh, they're like, dude, your dad's here, and he's supposed to be at work, and I'm going, uh-oh, Yeah. He is supposed to be at work. This can't possibly be good. So, uh, everyone's freaking out. My buddy goes, dude, you're busted. You're so fucked. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> and so as I get out of the car, I mean, out of the bus, I get in my dad's truck. And he takes me for a drive around the neighborhood. And he's like, so, says your mom found a half-naked girl lying in your bedroom today. <laughs> and, you know, I was trying not to laugh. I was trying not to smile. He didn't seem too pissed about it, but he says, I'm just going to let you know right now. I'm going to warn you. 
she, your mom is really, really pissed off. <laughs> and so you should just prepare yourself before we get home. <laughs> and nothing could, could, pair, could prepare you for what I walked into that day. So if you've ever watched uh, Bill Cosby, one of the stand-up acts he does, and one of his earliest ones, where he talks about how he gives all the kids chocolate cake for breakfast and the mom comes down and she sees all of them eating chocolate cake and she has this conniption fit where the eyes are bulging out of the, the face, the skull, and the veins everywhere are just pulsing. That's what I came home to. I walked in and I think even Tim the Toolman Taylor on Home Improvement used to, uh, to talk about how those women would have this stare and this anger and you don't, you don't look at it. You just can't look at it. It's horrible. You know, and, and that's that's what I came home to. It was this look of just sheer, absolute anger. I mean, the veins, again, just pulsing. I'll never forget that look of my mom. It was the most horrible expression. I was like, oh, fuck. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that used to be my regular sneak-out routine as I lived on the second floor, and I had a little tiny balcony, and I used to go out there and smoke cigarettes at night and stuff like that. And when I would sneak out, I would climb down the side of the house. There was a metal slope that kind of had these little steps. It was a weird A-frame kind of house, but, a, you know, a really interesting shape anyway. But it had these, like, little ridges in this aluminum side of the house. So I would quietly kind of step down that, run around to the fence, hop over, and would go and have a friend pick me up up the road. And, um, yeah, well, that all came to a stop that day when they hammered boards and nails and locked up my uh, sliding glass door so I couldn't ever sneak out of that again. They even put like a lock up top inside so that I couldn't open the door that, from that way. And uh, <clears throat> it, was, it was shortly after that that I ended up, <clears throat> I think, running away uh, with my the love of my life. Um, but uh, that's a story for a whole nother day. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that. That uh, that experience was absolutely crazy. Um, I still don't know whatever happened to that girl. I haven't talked to her in forever. Who knows? I really, actually, wish I would have ever, you know, had the chance to kind of get in touch with her again. Um, it's really questionable. I don't know. I've always wondered: is there a little me out there or something? Because you know, we didn't use any protection when we messed around. She used the excuse of. It was during that time of the month, so uh, it was impossible to get pregnant. And being 15 and stupid and a virgin, I said, oh, okay, sounds good to me. And, you know, I did my thing. And uh, So who knows? Maybe there's some little me running around out there that I know nothing about. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, again, I'll have a, another story to, to maybe take off from next week. I don't know about, uh, you know, I don't know. It, maybe I'll continue from where I left off here, or maybe I'll have something else. Totally different and interesting to share. I've got a lot of different stories about my life that uh, might interest some of you. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it's been a fun talking on Tuesday. I always enjoy these videos. It's a great chance to just interact with you guys and be myself without a whole lot of editing going on. Just me in front of a camera, enjoying good beer and talking with all of you. So anyway, here we are at the last uh, little bit of this one. Really good beer. Stay tuned for a contest for it. And uh, this one's for all of you. So, salute. Definitely just uh, one of my favorite Imperial IPAs. Really, really good. All right, so again, appreciate it. Don't forget, if you have any questions, topics you'd like to hear me talk about and or answer in next week's video, leave them down below in the comments. I always love interacting with you guys, and this series wouldn't be possible without all of you. I only had two questions this week, so maybe you guys can bump it up, give me a few more random crazy questions that I can uh, talk about and kind of keep me going a little bit. Um, or, uh, again... I try to avoid a lot of controversial topics, but I'm always open to whatever you want to hear about, and I'll try to be civil about what I discuss. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, stay toasty, my friends.